Greetings fellow programmers, this is Pavel and this is part 2 of our uh, cards uh, displaying and shuffling program. So far what we have is a form that uh, when we click the button displays our cards. They're not shuffled and it's just basically the first 40 cards. We're supposed to display 40 cards but it's just the first 40. So shuffling, that, that's not a big deal. Uh, I'm gonna create a void shuffle cards. Basically, I'm going to be shuffling the. Uh, we have an array of image boxes that already contain the actual images with the cards, so I can just shuffle those. I'm gonna be using obviously some randomizer. So random equals new random and. Um, how many times I want to shuffle it? Well, it's really up to you. It's uh, I'm gonna use a simple for loop again. Uh, zero i is less. I'm gonna shuffle, let's say, thousand times. You can do less or more. It doesn't really matter. And um, here, I'm gonna shuffle randomly, select two cards and switch them. So uh, I'm gonna create an integer called first card. Which basically will be the index of a card that I want to shuffle, and that's gonna be an integer second card. It's the uh, index uh, of the card that I want to shuffle with. So it's gonna be a random. Uh, oh, I, I got this one wrong. It's random. Rand. There you go. Uh, and to shuff, uh, get random integers I'll use next. I'll start from zero, that's our first index, which is zero. And our last index is actually 51, because we have 52 cards starting from zero. But uh, the, the maximum is uh, exclusive, meaning that's not included uh, in it. If I roll 51, the last card would not actually be ever, ever used to shuffle because it would not be ex it would not be included so that's why I have to use 52 meaning that it's from 0 to 51 and I'm gonna do the same for the second card that I'm gonna uh, do just a random that next 0 and 52 and um, now um, in case both of these actually select randomly the same card. I don't want to shuffle, you know, switch the same card with with itself. So I'm gonna do a simple if statement. If the first card uh, is not equal to the second card, in other words, if we actually have uh, uh, where's my second card? Second card. So if it's not equal to, if we have two different cards. Oh, I forgot N here. Second, there you go. I rename it. So um, only then you shuffle them. Uh, so you, I'm creating a temporary a kind of like a placeholder that will hold the uh, pictures array uh, or the the picture box with the index of first card. That's the w one card that we want to uh, switch. And our, which means that our pictures of the first card index, we can now switch with the one with the second card. So it's gonna be the pictures of the uh, second card index, and now the pictures of the second card index, we can simply assign it to the temp the value of temp because that one holds what used to be the first card. So now we basically switch them and that's how you shuffle them. That's all there is to it. So uh, if I come over here, after we create controls, I'll call the shuffle cards. And now when I click the uh, the deal button, we have a cards that are being shuffled random but if i click it again you can see that nothing is happening because they're already set 
what we have to do before each click, since we generated these dynamically, we have to dispose of these, uh, because these are uh, the whole array contains 52 objects, we have to dispose of them and create new ones. So uh, to do that, it's uh, we'll use the dispose uh, method. So uh, I'm gonna create a and create another method that will uh, use that. So I'm gonna do private void uh, dispose controls. Now the f one thing you could do there's a there's a method I could use something like this the controls dot clear, and that would clear all the controls from the uh, uh, from the form. So uh, uh, I could. Uh, the, the problem is that it would also clear the the button off. So I only want to clear the uh, image boxes, and moreover, uh, this one uh, this method does not actually disposes of the already created objects that we don't use. So I'm I'm gonna use uh, a different way. I'm gonna use. Uh, um, a for each loop, uh, for each. Oh, what am I doing? For each, and I'm gonna loop uh, for uh, in our pictures, uh, which is our array that holds all the picture boxes, and I'm gonna dispose of them, all of them. So I'm gonna do c dot dispose. And it will remove all the objects from the array. So what I have to do now is call this method, um, and I can call it. Uh, I can call it at the end after I display the object. Dispose controls. Actually, that won't work. But uh, let me show you what it what it's gonna do. Uh, after we display the objects, after we display the images, and I click the, nothing is happening. And that's because right after we display them, we also dispose of them. So we cannot call it from uh, right after we dispose of them. We have to call them uh, from our uh, from our creating uh, controls. Like before we create controls, we wanna uh, dispose of the the ones that were already created. So let me run that. Uh, that's gonna throw some error. I can obviously it's not doing anything. An object reference not set to an uh, uh, object that was it was not uh, instantiated. Let me see what the pictures hold. Oh, they're all null. Oh, that's because uh, okay. Um, what is what is happening is that uh, the uh, when we create the uh, when I'm calling the dispose uh, method, it's disposing the objects before they are being even created the first time. Like I go, it goes to create controls, and that's the first thing it sees uh, to dispose the dispose controls but only after that we are actually creating it uh, and populating the array in other words there's nothing in the array yet it's just 52 placeholders so I can do something like if uh, the array let's say the first uh, index we can just uh, check the first index if that one is not null then we know that uh, uh, we already created the objects and then we can dispose of them. So the first time this runs, this one is actually being skipped. And uh, only then uh, it goes to the uh, to create to dispose the object. So let me let me run that. Uh, 
yeah it created uh, randomly and we have you can see that it creates random but we still have the problem that it's kind of upside down so um, how do you do it uh, to display the left edge well you know where we have our display control loop we start from zero go all the way to the top uh, to do it the other way around you basically reverse it you start pr from the uh, last card which is 40 in our case it's gonna be 39 because we start from zero all the way we go in all the way to zero from zero to 39 which is 40 cards so an i over here wouldn't be less than 40 but instead it would be up to, until we hit zero from 39 all the way to zero that make, makes 40 uh 40 cards and instead of i plus we count down again we 39 then 38 then 37 and so forth all the way to zero and i think that should actually do the whole the trick so let me let me run that and you can see that they are in, indeed from the left and they randomly being shuffled and displayed as we click all right so uh yeah this is the exercise this is a little different than uh, what you would probably normally do with your forms but you have to keep in mind that uh, in C-sharp, this is all objects. Every, every control has, uh, uh, on the form is an object with its own properties. And as such, it can be generated uh, kind of manually. And let me just delete all these unused usings. And, um, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> all right. Another oh, drawing. Okay. I just don't want them all if I don't need them. Anyway, so um, to to recap, to create all this, you need to dynamically generate the picture boxes, which you do typically, if it's, if it's so many of them, you would do them in the loop uh, that we have over here. You just create a new object, new picture box, and we are sending that picture box one at a time to our method called size image that assigns the image to it with the path. Now, this is uh, the way the path works in this case is simply because the, uh, the cards are named one, two, three, all the way to 52 dot JPEG. If you had uh, each card called something else, this wouldn't work like that. Uh, you wouldn't be able to construct the path but in this case it worked uh, very nice so uh, we assign the image to it we assign the uh, size mode in other words we center the image into the picture box return the new picture box with all the properties back and assign it to our uh, array of picture boxes and we do all 52 of them then we display them uh, by looping through uh, our array, we display in 40 cards. We display from the from the highest uh, of the 40s to the to the lowest, which is zero, uh, simply because we want them uh, in the right position. The way the images are being set, uh, that's that's how it simply works out in our case. And we are offsetting them uh, to the left. And to the top, to the top, it only means that uh, we are moving them down on the form, not down in kind of perspective from each uh, other. The cards are in a line, but they are uh, they are offset uh, to the left. Uh, this calculation, that's really uh, just a trial and error. Uh, that's simply how it looks on the form. That there's nothing. There's no magic to it. The way that it's 18 here and this is 100, uh, that, that's just kind of a random. You could come up with different numbers that would look maybe even better. So um, yeah, don't don't look for any magic in these numbers. This is, like I said, just an error and trial or trial and error. And uh, when we have that, we shuffle the cards. We call the shuffle cards. We simply switch two cards at a time we loop uh, we do it thousand times and then our array contains uh, the objects that are not in order anymore and so we can simply uh, display them uh, on the form and that's 
all the magic. So I hope it was uh, helpful that you learned something. Uh, please like the video, share it, comment it, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.